All right, so let's convert. Um, we're in section 8.1, converting between polar coordinates and rectangular. So going back and forth between the rectangular world and the polar world. And so this point could be measured in x, y, and this point could be measured in r theta, but they're the same point. They're just kind of measured in different worlds. Right down here would be the same point as like down here. So they represent the same points. You're just kind of getting there through a different path. Um, so polar to rectangular. So polar, um, we start with polar and we know r and theta. So we can find x by doing r cosine theta and we can find y by doing r sine theta. And that's just coming from a triangle. x, y, and r, right? So cosine theta would be x over r, so we can multiply and get x. Sine theta would be y over r. So I'm not doing any new math. This is coming from stuff we've done before. And if we want to go the opposite direction, Pythagorean theorem tends to be useful. So if we start with a rectangular x, y, and polar, we want polar r theta. Um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared is useful. And then tangent of theta is y over x is also useful. So let's try a couple. So we have the point 3 pi over 4. So let's see what that looks like. We go to pi over 4, and we go 1, 2, 3 circles out. So it would be that point. And so we can, also, we can now convert it to x, y, and see what those values would be. So it's the same spot on the graph, right? We're just using circular motions rather than rectangular motions to get there. So we know r is 3, and theta is pi over 4. So x will be r cosine theta, which is 3 cosine pi over 4, which is what? 3 root 2 over 2. So that would be my x value if we switched to the rectangular world. And then y will be r sine theta. Same thing, 3 sine and then pi over 4. We end up with 3 root 2 over 2. So same value. So again, that would be the y value if I switched to the x, y world. All right, let's do the reverse. So now we have rectangular coordinates, 1, 1. So 1, 1, that would be right there. And now we want to switch it to the polar world. So I will use r squared is x squared plus y squared. So 1 squared plus 1 squared is r squared. So r is 2, or r is square root 2. And then theta, we can use um, that tangent formula. So tangent theta is y over x. So tangent theta is 1 over 1. So when does tangent equal 1? Um, I think it's pi over 4. And that makes sense because we're in the first quadrant. So the point would be root 2 pi over 4. So if we went to pi over 4 and we went to this radius of root 2, we would land in the same spot. And then just to get in the habit, let's write ordered pairs every time. So let's write an ordered pair in example 2 as well. 3 root 2 over 2 and 3 root 2 over 2. So we're just getting used to the fact that there's kind of two graphing worlds that exist. So let's try um, cosecant. Let's convert sorry, let's convert the following equation to rectangular coordinates and describe the curve. So we have this weird equation in polar land. We have no idea what this looks like, but it's r equals cotangent theta times cosecant theta. So let's see if we can rewrite it. I think because everything involves sine and cosine, I'm going to see if that'll lead me anywhere. Um, or maybe tangent could be useful for cotangent. So cotangent is 1 over tangent. And then cosecant is 1 over sine. And then I don't really like the denominators, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply. So we get r. It's kind of a guessing process in the beginning. r sine theta tangent theta equals 1, right? Sine theta tangent theta, right? They cancel out. And then we know these. So r sine theta, if you look back, was y. And tangent theta was y over x. 
So we're gonna get this new curve. Y squared, that's Y times Y over X equals one, or Y squared over X equals one, which gives us this um, Y squared equals X. Does anyone remember what this is? This was a sideways parabola. Because this is x, uh, y equals x squared, so x equals y squared just makes a sideways version. So a nice little reminder. But so just mess with it algebraically until you get for thing that things that are familiar. So cotangent and cosecant weren't familiar. These alone weren't familiar, but now I have things that are familiar. And when I say familiar, I mean one of these four. All right, and our final example is to convert um, this last equation to polar coordinates. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 5y. So I would go back to those equations and just plug in. So we learned x squared plus y squared is r squared. And 5y would be 5 and then r sine theta. And then we can divide by r, and we'll get an equation that looks a little bit nicer. So we get r is equal to 5 sine theta. So we'll see what these graphs look like later, but we're just practicing the conversion between the two worlds.